Good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, the STEM Digital School. This is Natural Sciences and Technology, Grade 6. Okay, my name is Onkara Vetesetze, and I am your teacher. All right, guys, um, so just continuing from yesterday, where we left off, right? We were looking at matter and materials, materials processing, rather, and this is in topic four, which is called dissolving, right? So guys, just um, quick ground rules. You guys, um, can you please use the group chat, okay, to send through any messages, any answers that you guys have as we go throughout the lesson. And if I am going too fast for you, you can use one of those icons in the participants icon, which says go slower and just press it. And if you do have any questions, can raise your hand or alternatively use the group chat to write your question. Okay, so we can start with the lesson. And I hope everyone is well, right? Hope everyone is good. Okay, so just a quick recap, guys. This is the work that we covered yesterday. Okay, so we looked at the rate of dissolving, okay? And then we also looked at factors affecting the rate of dissolving. So just to find out, what did we say the rate of dissolving is? What is the rate of dissolving? So you guys can use the group chat to write in your answers or you can raise your hand. Then we'll just unmute your mic and you can give us the answer. What is the rate of dissolving? And also guys, if you don't know what, what the answer is, um, I would suggest that you also write it in the group chat so that we can um, cover it, okay? What is the rate of dissolving? When we speak of the rate of dissolving, what are we referring to? Okay, so I see Mashori wrote in the group saying that it is how fast a solid dissolves. Okay, brilliant Mashori. It is indeed how fast a solid dissolves in a solvent. All right, so basically in short, it is the time it takes for a solid to dissolve. So well done Mashori. I hope everyone else knew the answer, okay, although you were quiet, but yeah, as we move on. Okay, so we also looked at factors, right, that we can control in an experiment, right? And we also looked at those we can change. We looked at the dependent and independent variables. If you guys remember when we looked at um, the bar graph, okay, we're talking about a horizontal axis as well as a vertical axis, okay? So just also quick recap, the dependent variable, is it found on the horizontal or the vertical axis, the dependent variable? Is it found on the horizontal or the vertical axis when we're drawing a graph? So remember the vertical axis is the one that goes from um, a bottom to up and your horizontal axis um, is the one going from your left to right. Okay, so as I said, the dependent variable, is it found on the vertical axis or the horizontal axis? Can you use the group chat to send through your answer or you can raise your hand, guys. Okay, Mashore is saying through an answer, also saying vertical and what, do other people say? What do you guys say? I see Mashora says vertical. Does anyone else have a different answer or are we going with Mashora's answer? Okay, I see but Suze is also saying vertical. Do I have anyone else maybe who has a different answer or is actually agreeing with them? Okay, our two also says vertical. Brilliant, guys. So the dependent variable, it is found on the vertical axis. Okay, so very well done. And now we can obviously say that the independent variable would be found on the horizontal axis. Okay. 
Okay, so we also looked at a fair test. Okay, so we said that a fair test is a test in which you only change one factor and keep all other factors the same. So if you guys can just remember from the experiment that we covered yesterday, we, we kept all factors the same and we only changed temperature, right? We only changed the temperature of the water. Okay, and all other factors were kept the same or were kept constant. Okay, and then uh, we got to a conclusion saying that the warmer the water is, the quicker the salt dissolves, right? And he said, therefore, an increase in temperature caused the rate of dissolving to increase as well. Okay, so um, I just highlighted this on my slides, basically just to show you guys that it is an important thing to note that when we increase temperature, right, we also increasing the rate of dissolving. Or the rate of dissolution. Okay. Then um, next note says that as you increase the temperature of a liquid solvent, you give more energy to the particles of the solvent, making them move faster. And basically, guys, this last bullet is um, just a clear explanation, all right, or a scientific explanation as to why the solid dissolves okay because the um the solid would get more energy okay because of the temperature increase all right then a higher temperature increases the rate of dissolving so that was just the gist of yesterday's lesson okay so today guys we are going to continue with dissolving remember we looked at um one factor right we looked at how temperature affects the rate of dissolving. And today we will look at how stirring or shaking the mixture affects the rate of dissolving, as well as the grain size of the solid. Okay, so guys, if you do have any questions, please do post them in the group chat. If I am going too fast, do um, slow me down using that icon on the participants thing, which says go slower. Okay. Right, so um, this was, a typical example that we used also yesterday. This is from the Via Africa Natural Science and Technology textbook, where we have sugar as a solid and water is the solvent. So guys, again, remember, yeah, every mixture or every, rather every solution always has a solid and a solvent. Okay, very important to note. Every solution always has a solid and a solvent. All right, and he said that the the um the solute is the minor component of the solution. Okay. All right, I will go a bit slower. Sorry for that, guys. I will go a bit slower. Okay. Okay. Let us look at how shaking and stirring a mixture affects the rate of dissolving or the rate of dissolution. So some of your guys' textbooks speaks about a rate of dissolution. Other textbooks speak about the rate of dissolving, okay? So I have a question for you guys. What happens when you put sugar in your tea or coffee? I believe uh, most of us have actually already had our tea and coffee and we drink it without stirring it. What happens when you put sugar in your tea and you drink it without stirring it, or you drink it and stir it? How would it taste like? How would this coffee or tea taste like? If you can just take us through a process where you have probably drank tea and you forgot to stir, probably stir your sugar. How did it taste like? I see Piwe has raised her hand or his hand. I'll just unmute him now. Piwa, sorry. Okay, it will, it will not taste sweet. It will not taste sweet. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much, Piwa. Okay, so Piwa says uh, the coffee or the tea will not taste sweet. Okay, and then I see um, Vitz user saying the sugar will sink to the bottom. So yes, Piwa and Vitz user, you guys are both correct. So the tea will not taste sweet, right? 
And then when you're taking the last sip, you will see most of the sugar at the bottom of the cup. Okay, so I see our two also says you won't taste anything. It will be plain. Yes, you will not taste the sugar. Okay, and the sugar at that point where you're drinking your tea, it wouldn't have dissolved, right? So there would actually be almost to a point where we say you shouldn't have just added the, um, the sugar. Okay, so um, Ejiro, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ejiro. Okay, so guys, let's do an activity which will basically take us through how shaking and stirring a mixture affects the rate of dissolving. Okay, so this was found in activity two in the BioAfrica textbook. It reads, investigate the effect of stirring or not stirring on the rate of dissolving. Okay. So this is basically what we will need in order to carry out this experiment or activity. So we'll need a three 250 milliliter beakers. Okay. We'll also need a measuring cylinder. We're going to need two ice cream sticks, or you guys can use a stirring rod if you have. Okay. And then we're also going to need three five milliliter measuring spoons, as well as coarse salt, water and stopwatch okay and this is what we'll be doing so firstly we're going to place the three beakers in a row on a dark surface okay so we place an ice cream stick for stirring next to the second as well as the third beaker so as you guys can see on the pictures that are appearing on screen your first beaker right it does not have um the ice cream stick but the second one has the ice cream stick as well as the third one they also have the ice cream stick okay then secondly what we do is we measure and pour 150 milliliters of tap water into each beaker okay so now we're going to add the same amount of water into each beaker and then we're going to hold a level of a five milliliter spoon of salt above each beaker okay so we're going to have um, a teaspoon of salt above each beaker then fourth instruction reads starting time as you start the timing as you add the salt to the water so um, a friend or someone assisting you would be holding um, a stopwatch or their cell phone right to actually measure the time it takes for that salt to dissolve so we can just go back to um, the fourth instruction which says you start timing as you add the salt to the water in all three beakers at the same time. So you guys understand that you would probably need to work in groups of two to each, okay? Then we immediately begin stirring the mixture in the second beaker very slowly and the mixture in the third solution a little faster, okay? And we do not stir the mixture in the first beaker. Okay, so guys, this particular beaker here, it would not be stirred. So you do not stir anything in this beaker. And in the second beaker, there is stirring that takes place, but you stir slowly. Okay, and then in the third beaker, you stir fast. Okay, so you increase your pace of stirring. Okay, then um, the fifth, the fifth um, instruction here says you keep up the same you keep up this, the same stirring speed until the last of the salt crystals in the second and third beakers dissolve. Then in a results table, you enter the time it takes for the salt in each mixture to dissolve completely. All right. So that is basically how we'd be carrying out this experiment. You guys can also try it at home. This is a safe experiment to actually do at home. Okay, just use a glass, um, a glass jar if you do not have beakers. Okay, and you can also just use a teaspoon instead of um, an ice cream stick or a stirring rod, right? So this is our results table. So um, we have the time it took to dissolve the non-stirring beaker. So no dissolving took place within two minutes in the first beaker. So remember the first beaker, we just poured our salt and our water and we did not stay, okay? 
And then in the second beta, where we had a very slow stirring, it took 60 seconds in order for that salt to dissolve. Okay, or, and in this case, guys, just to note that the salt is our solute. Okay, the salt is our solute. And then in the third beaker, where we stirred fast, okay, it took 30 seconds in order for our solute to dissolve. And again, guys, the salt was the solute in this um, experiment, okay? So this is our result table. And I think we have a question. So guys, in this activity, which factor is the independent variable? Which factor is the independent variable? So you guys can use the group chat to send to your answers or you can raise your hand. Which factor is the independent variable for this particular activity? I see my first hand is up. Right. Hello, ma'am. Hi, how are you? I'm fine and you, ma'am. I'm well, thanks. So, ma'am, the mm -hmm. independent variable yep. is the stirring. The stirring. Yes, because why actually, it, yeah. because it doesn't need anything to like make it work, but like the experience the experiment needs very this experiment itself needs very slow stirring faster stirring and no stirring all right beautiful Mashuri. thank you very much thank you ma'am sure so do we have um anyone else who has an answer what is the independent variable in this activity does anyone else have an answer or would like to give an answer? Okay. Right, so let us see. Okay, so Ijira says, I agree with the stirring. And guys, that is correct. So the amount of stirring or the intensity of stirring is the independent variable. So guys, again, why do we say that the stirring is the independent variable? Because this is the variable or the factor that we are changing. We are in control of it, okay? So if you are probably asked um, in a test or in questions or other activities, why do you say that um, your particular answer is the independent factor or the independent variable, then you would just say it's the factor or the variable that we have control over, okay? Then I believe we have another question, yes. What is the dependent variable in this particular activity? What is the dependent variable in this activity? And so guys, you can use the group chat to send through your answers, or you can raise your hand. So I see it. I to say is the fastest stirring would be the dependent variable. All right. Do you have um, another answer or do we do we agree with our way to? Okay, Ajira says, I think the salt is the dependent variable. Okay. So what do the other students in the class say? Are we agreeing with Awe too? Are we agreeing with Ejiro? Or do we have a different answer? Okay, so I'll just wait for an answer or two from different students, then we can continue. Okay, so Awe two changes and says no stirring. <laughs> okay, I'll wait too. So what about the fastest wearing? Are you kind of telling that one? Okay, and I see Kia who's saying the salt. So Kia is agreeing with a Jiro. All right. 
So L2, which one is it? Faster steering or no steering? Okay, L2 is speaking to um, her first answer, which is faster steering. Okay. All right, let's see what the answer is. So guys, the dependent variable is the time it takes for the solid to dissolve. So I see um, Ejira and Gaia, they said the salt. Okay, so I believe this is what you were trying to put in words. So guys, if we can just, um, I think we can, yeah, even this slide is okay, because I believe, yeah, we can use this one. So guys, if we can just read here, no? at the activity, the reason or the aim of our activity or our experiment, it says we are investigating the effect of stirring or not stirring on the rate of dissolving. So guys, usually and most of the time, this is the case where on your investigative question or the aim of the experiment, the heading of your experiment or your activity, it would usually tell you your dependent variable as well as your independent variable. Okay, so you see here in the activity, it says investigate the effect of stirring or not stirring on the rate of dissolving. So we had already mentioned that for question A, stirring is our independent variable. All right, so that is the one that we have control over, just as Mashori um, explained to us. Okay, and then what we are left with is the rate of dissolving. If you guys can just remember, in the beginning of the, the class, I asked you guys, what do we mean when we talk about the rate of dissolving? And Mashori answered and said that it is how fast a solid dissolves, right? And I also added on, to uh, Mashore's answer, and I said that it is what? It, it is also the time it takes for a solid to dissolve. All right, so guys, that is why our dependent variable is the time it takes for the solid to dissolve. And if you had said it is the time it takes for the salt to dissolve, then you would also be correct, okay? Your answer would also be correct unlike just saying that it is the salt okay so you need to explain what about the salt okay so it is the time it takes for the salt or the solute to dissolve are we all together are we understanding now i'm going to need a response from everyone okay do we all understand and just write yes or no and then if your answer is no then we'll just get to the problem yeah, I see um, Gia says, yep, O A2, it's Nam, Ajiro, Talia, okay. Okay, so I just need an indication from everyone, please. Do we all understand? Okay, Michael says, yes, ma'am. Hey guys, just make sure that your videos are off. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, all right. Okay, so then I can move on. So I believe those who haven't answered, um, I think they understand. Great be less in P way. Do you guys understand? As well as Jocelyn, I didn't get an answer from you. Do you guys understand? But if you don't, if there is something that you guys don't understand, just um, you will write your question in the group chat and then I will go over it with you guys again. All right. So let us continue. Okay, so I hope guys from now, if you are asked what the independent variable is and the dependent variable, you will be able to answer that with ease. All right. Cool. So the speech bubble reads, um, stirring a mixture causes the solid to dissolve faster. Okay, so and this is something that we have noted in our results table, that the faster stirring, it took less time 
for the solid to dissolve. And when we stirred slowly, then we took more time, right? And then when we didn't stir at all, no dissolving took place, all right? So faster stirring speeds up the process. Then the solute that was not stirred will dissolve eventually, but it will take a very long time. Okay, so it will dissolve eventually, but it will take a very long time. And that is why, guys, my answer here at the no stirring part, I said no dissolving took place within two minutes. Okay. All right. So then, guys, the next factor that we will be looking at is the grain size of the solute. So, so far, we have looked at how temperature of a mixture affects the rate of dissolving. We have also looked at how stirring on or shaking a mixture affects the rate of dissolving, right? And now we are going to look at how the grain size of a solute affects the rate of dissolving or the rate of dissolution. Okay, so in this investigation, guys, we will explore whether coarse salt dissolves faster than fine salt. Okay, and we have a question which says, what do you guys expect? What do you guys expect? So it reads, the investigation, we will explore whether coarse salt dissolves faster than fine salt. Which one do you guys think will dissolve faster? Is it the coarse salt? or the fine salt. Okay, so Gia says the fine salt. And then Injura says, ma'am, what is coarse salt? So coarse salt is those um, rocky salts, okay? Those, um, I'll just show you guys a picture here. So it's like rocky salt. Okay, so you have the table salt that you put in your food, which is usually fine. And then the coarse salt is usually rocky. Okay, so you can actually see the crystals, like they're quite huge. Okay. Right, our to say is the fine salt will dissolve faster. All right, let's see if indeed um, your guys' guess will be correct. So the materials and apparatus that we are going to use in this particular experiment is we'll need two clear containers, right? Um, either a glass, glass beaker <clears throat> would be very much ideal. Then we're going to use a fine table salt. Then we're going to use the coarse rock salt. Then we're going to need a teaspoon, tap water, as well as a stopwatch. Okay, so here we have um, the picture. This is showing us the coarse salt and this is the fine salt. Okay, so this is the salt that we usually use in our food, but some people also use the coarse salt and just crush it just before they put it on their food. Okay. Okay, I see a question which says why? <laughs> why what, Gia? Yeah. Um, what is your why referring to? Why people use coarse salt? I think that is your question because it is like you get a more saltier taste if you're using coarse salt, all right? You get a more saltier taste if you're using coarse salt. So you'd have like large grains of um, salt on your food, then you'd obviously taste the salt much more than the fine table salt, okay? Right, so this is our method. We are measuring the same quantity of 100 milliliters of tap water into each container. So guys, remember, we're only using two containers, right? And then we're gonna place one teaspoon. This is five milliliters of fine table salt into the first container. Then we're gonna stir the solution and measure the time it takes for the salt to dissolve completely. And we're gonna record the um, time in a table, right? Then we're gonna repeat steps two to three with coarse rock salt. So this is um, just in short what we will have. This is your beaker with the fine salt. And this is the beaker with your coarse salt. We have our stirring rod and as I said, guys, you can use a teaspoon, you can use um, an ice cream stick to basically just stir your solutions, 
Okay. Right, and here is our result table, and it's showing that the fine salt in water, right, it took 30 seconds to dissolve, and the coarse salt, it took 60 seconds to dissolve. So that is almost double the time it took for the fine salt to dissolve. And I see a juror saying that the fine salt will dissolve faster because coarse salt is too hard and rocky. All right, beautiful, a juror. And we have questions. What did we compare in this investigation? What did we compare in this investigation? So we will get to see, or rather we have already, we can already see that the coarse salt took less time. I mean, rather the fine salt took less time than coarse salt to dissolve. But the question right now is, what did we compare in this investigation? You guys can use the group chat or you can raise your hand. What did we compare in this investigation? Okay, Jura's hand is up. The, yes, two, the two solids that we compared here was the rocky salt, which is coarse salt, and the fine mm -hmm. salt. And the fine salt. Those were the two salts that we compared. All right, beautiful. Yeah, so Jura says it's uh, the two types of salts uh, that we compared. All right, and that is beautiful. Okay, so guys, just to remember, we spoke about three factors, right, that affect the rate of solution. We already covered temperature, we already covered um, stirring, right? And then the last uh, factor that we are looking at, which is now is the grain size. Okay, so we're looking at the grain size of salt. Okay, so let's see what the answer is it's the grain size of salt so Ijira, you are on the right track it is the grain size of salt i think i see an answer in the group chat it says how long it takes for the coarse um coarse salt and fine salt to dissolve okay that is also correct um way too so that was like the main gist of our investigation but what we compared was the grain size of the salt okay so I hope everyone um, understands and is uh, keeping up. Okay, next question. Name three things that were the same about the three, or rather the two situations. Sorry, they're supposed to be the two situations. Name three things that were the same about the two situations. So these situations that they are referring to is the factors that we kept constant when we were, um, investigating the time it takes to dissolve the fine salt in water, as well as the coarse salt in water. Okay, so this is just a mistake. It's supposed to be two, all right. So name three things that were kept constant or that were the same. Okay, so I see Kia says the amount of water, beautiful. So we, I think we, in this experiment, we used 115 milliliters of water, okay? So that is one. So we need two more things that we kept constant. Um, Jiro says the salt. So yes, we use the same amount of salt. <clears throat> Thank you again, says the beakers. Okay, here's the beakers. And do we have anyone else with a different answer? Okay, so let's see what the answer is. So the amount of water, which was mentioned by Kia, beautiful. The one teaspoon of salt, Ijura mentioned that. And you guys did not mention that 
we start the solution in both beakers. So yeah, the reason why we do not consider the beakers as um, a factor is because it does not have an impact on what we are testing, okay? So if we used in one, in one, um, like if for fine salt, we used a glass beaker, and then for coarse salt, we used a yogurt container. That does not impact how, it does not impact the rate of the solution, okay? So the beakers do not impact the rate of the solution. So when you're asked about factors that impact your experiment, they're looking at the factors that impact what you are testing in the experiment. Okay, so these are your three answers. Okay, more questions. What, what did we change in this investigation? What did we change in this investigation? What did we change in this investigation? So another way to actually put this question is just saying, what is the independent variable or independent factor in this investigation? So question three, what did we change in this investigation? Guys can write in the group chat or you can use your hand. What did we change in this investigation? Hey guys, I am waiting for your answers. Okay, this, I'm sorry, Ichiro <laughs> says the salt. Okay. And then, yeah, um, ma'am, please repeat your letter. Okay. You probably didn't hear the question. I said, what did we change in this investigation? Okay. So if you guys can't hear me clearly or there's something going on with your sound, just look at your screen. Okay, so the question did appear on the screen. And I asked, what did we change in this investigation? A juror said the salt. So yes, a juror, remember again, we're talking about the grain size of the salt. Okay, so when we're talking about fine salt versus coarse salt, we are looking at grain size. Okay, don't just say salt put in grain size, it's very much important. This first part here is very much important. Okay, so we use the fine salt in one beaker and coarse rock salt in the other beaker, all right? Then question four, what did we measure? What did we measure? What did we measure? So another way to ask this question is to say that what is the dependent variable in this investigation? What did we measure? So a juror says we measured the time. Cassie Piwa's hand is up. Okay, thank you very much, Ajira, for Piwa, sorry. Piwa's hand is up. Hi, Piwa. Hello, ma'am. Okay. We measured the amount of time it takes to, to dissolve salt in water. All right, beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, so Piwa says we measured the amount of time it takes to dissolve the salt in water. And that is correct. So we are basically measuring the rate at which the salt dissolves okay so yes um piwa that is correct and in general you said you are measuring time so remember to elaborate or explain what you mean what time are you measuring okay Jiro? Okay, and then kia said how long it takes for grains to dissolve beautiful that is also correct okay c 
see if we have more questions. Yes. Question five, which type of salt dissolved faster? And for this question, most of you guys answered me before we even did the activity. And you said that the fine salt would dissolve at a much faster pace or would have a faster rate of dissolution. And that is correct. Okay. So guys, just to note, the fine salt dissolved faster than the coarse salt. Grain size affects the rate of dissolving. So when we increase the grain size of the solute, the rate at which the solute dissolves is slower. Okay, guys, very much important to note this um, gray box here, that grain size affects the rate of dissolving. When we increase the grain size of the solute, the rate at which the solute dissolves is slower. All right. So guys, key concepts that we have covered. Firstly, the time it takes for a substance to dissolve is called the dissolving rate or the rate of dissolution. Second um, point, if you guys can just follow with me here. I'm at the second bullet. The rate at which a substance dissolve can be affected by three factors, namely temperature of the solution, whether or not the solution is stirred or shaken, as well as the grain size of the solute. Okay. Then a solute will generally dissolve faster if the solvent in which it dissolves is warm. So here would have like a change in temperature. Okay, so this part would be referring to a change in temperature. And then the second last bullet says a solid will dissolve faster when the solution is stirred or shaken. And the last point reads a solid will dissolve faster if the grain, if the size of its grains is small. So guys, this brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for joining in. Guys, tomorrow we will be looking at water pollution, mixtures and water pollution, right? So um, you guys can just read up on the topic in your textbooks, okay? So that you just come prepared in class. And if you do have any questions with regards to um, what we have covered today, you guys can just also write it in the group chat. I believe we still have three minutes and we can tackle those questions, okay? But nonetheless, guys, we use the Via Africa Natural Science and Technology textbook as well as the Siafula um, Grade 6 textbook. And yesterday, most of you guys mentioned that you are using um, a particular textbook. So I'm still looking to access that textbook and then I will just implement the activities in our lessons. All right. So these are the textbooks that we got, that we used. And if you need any of these, you can get them on, on Snaplify as well as on Thunderbolt's um, website. Okay. So guys, thank you. Thank you very much for joining in today. If you have any questions, here is the email. Yeah, the STEM Digital School is at africateengeeks.co.za. And if you guys need slides or you want, you need to ask me a question, my um, email address is also appearing on screen. Okay, so thank you guys um, for joining in. Please do enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye um, and see you tomorrow. Okay, guys, I have noted what you are saying in the, in the group chat. Okay, I am still looking for that particular textbook. Okay, bye guys.